everything that we've been asked to do, starting from starting from here. Absolutely. No, we have not. But prayerfully, we're getting to that place where uh, 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 where, where we're willing to follow through with, with what it tells us in the Word of God. And what is that, Minister Weathersby? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, let me say that again, in all your ways, no, let me say it one more time, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I venture to say that many of us today have not allowed God to direct our paths in all our ways. Lord have mercy. Many of us are in situations right now that we're crying out to the Lord to deliver us from. Why? Because we did not trust him. We did not acknowledge him. What did we do? We leaned to our own understanding. And now we found ourselves in a pit. And we need God to... Oh my God, Peter, walking on the water, lost sight of Jesus Christ, fell into the... Uh, sunk into the... and sank into the water. But then he had enough sense. He looked up and said, Lord, save me. Many of us need to be rescued right now by Christ. Because of our disobedience. What do you mean disobedience? I didn't. Well, you didn't trust in the Lord. Anytime that you do not adhere to the word of God, you have disobeyed God. Plain and simple. Now, let me go on and show you what, what, what it takes for us to be. Uh, uh, what it said here. Uh, 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 that, what we just read in uh, first, first uh, uh, Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And that fifth verse, oh my God. Let me, start, let, me, let me go back. It is not conceited, arrogant. This is 1 Corinthians uh, the 13, 5. And I'm going to go back to the second, uh, Philippians, the second chapter, and pick it up at the sixth verse. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Watch this, y'all. Who, although being, I'm in Philippians, the second chapter. Who, although being essentially one with God, and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Watch this. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity. Let's go back. Let's go back. 1 Corinthians 13, the fifth chapter. Fifth, I'm sorry, 13, fifth verse, 13 chapter, fifth verse. Love, God's love, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Jesus Christ, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity. That's where it begins. That's where the, uh, the eminence of God's love comes from. It comes from Christ. And it has to come from within. Therefore, if God's love is not within you, you cannot produce the effects of God's love. That's why many of us are walking around in disobedience. That's why many are on that broad way to destruction. Because God's love is not emanating from within us. Why? Because apparently it ain't in us. It, well, I'm going to put it this way. I'm not going to say it's not in us. I'm not going to say that. Because some of us have, have the love of God within us. We are born again. But we're grieving the Holy Ghost. How are we grieving the Holy Ghost? By denying the power of the Holy Ghost. By denying the Holy Ghost to be in control of our lives. We want to control our own lives. We want to do our own things. We want to drive our own car. We want to drive our, uh, yeah, our car of life. We want to drive, we want to be the sole driver of that. Well, understand this, you and I ain't, ain't, ain't driving anything in our lives, amen. Because we, you, need to, you, you need to understand, we need to understand, God is in control of everything. The Bible says this in Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated, I set you apart, I anointed you to be a prophet to the nations. So what makes you think, what makes you or I think that we are in control of anything in our lives that when God tells us in his word, he has already mapped out for us what our life will be. Oh, 
Well, Minister Weathersby, I don't know why you're saying that because uh, I'm not one. Exactly, I'm, I'm one right now. I'm not even sure what my life is to become. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. That's because you ain't sought out the one that can give you the answer. That's why you don't know. Because it's available to you to know. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, ninth verse. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. And, and I want to make sure, I want you to understand what it says here in the word of God. For those who hold, who love him, not yourself, not your gift, not that goal that you're trying to attain, but love him. And how do we come to that point of loving him? Well, we have to utilize and appropriate the love of him in order to love him. God loved us when we didn't love him. And we couldn't love him the way that we should have loved him. Well, no, we couldn't love him because we didn't we had that we did not have the proper love within us to love him. Oh, we had some love, but it wasn't the love of God. It was the love of man. And the love of man deals with with a couple of things. It deals with feelings. It deals with uh, 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 affection. Amen. Uh, feelings. Feelings. How I feel about you is how it is going to determine whether or not I love you. Affection. Affection. The, the, or, or attraction. Attraction. Yeah, attraction. Uh, and whether or not I'm attracted to you is going to determine whether or not I love you. Uh, in the Greek, feelings. Philios. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, attraction, eros, erotica, 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 eros. Uh -huh. what, what, what attracts me to you? That comes and it goes. It, it is not sustaining. It is not enduring. Without God's love, we have no real love. Lord have mercy. Verse 10, 1 Corinthians 2.10. Yet to us, for those who say they don't know. I don't know what God has for me. I don't know my thoughts. I don't know my plans. I don't know my purpose. I don't understand. Yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through His Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding uh, the profound and bottomless things of God. The divine counsels things hidden beyond man's scrutiny. That's right. Your intellect ain't going to be able to go in there and figure out the things of God. That ain't going to happen. It can happen. And the word will speak to that here in a bit. For what person perceives, knows, and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Uh-oh. And here's the question that God gave me. Some 15 years ago when I preached my initial sermon. Is he in you? <laughs> yeah. Just so no one discerns. Comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God. Except the spirit of God. And that's the him that we're talking about. Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. Oh, there's another spirit. That's why I had to make, make it plain. as to, That's the spirit that we're talking about. Because there's another spirit. The spirit of the Antichrist. Mmm. We have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, given to us that we may realize and comprehend and appreciate the, the, the gifts, the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. Lord, have mercy. And we are setting these truths forth. These truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit. You cannot go to school, uh, uh, go to a, 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 a secondary school, a, a, a school of higher education and learning and, and learn what I'm telling you right now. It ain't taught that way. That's right. You can't go to seminary and get this. 
You can't go to Bible college and get this. The word of God says we are setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom. Human wisdom. But taught by the Holy Spirit. Combining and interpreting spiritual truth with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. There's a certain language that, that God speaks to uh, to his people with. Amen. Now, many people talk about the heavenly language. Uh, there is a heavenly language in a, in a, that, 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 that uh, is spoken where we don't, you and I couldn't understand it uh, unless we were in that place. Amen. But understand this. Even in this, and I'm doing this by way of the Holy Ghost. When I'm saying that, when the word of God is saying that we are... Uh, uh, with truth with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit we ain't necessarily talking about speaking in tongues here no we're not because speaking in tongues does not give you an understanding of God's word amen the heavenly language the spiritual language is because we're controlled by the spirit and the spirit when you're controlled by the spirit anything you do it, it, it comes under, it is subject to the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you allow that to happen, guess what will happen? Your language, your speech will change. And I know this to be true because I come from a place. I come from a place. I didn't always speak like this. Oh no. A lot of times when I spoke, you would find within my speech some words that would fetter four letter words. Oh yeah, I could cuss real good. I could cuss real good. Oh my God, I got it naturally. Amen. I could I could cuss. I could absolutely cuss. Was I a cusser all the time? No, but I could cuss. And the language I speak right now is absolutely, uh, 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 oh my God, is, is a spiritual language. Because now, oh my God, every time that God speaks to me, every time I see something, whether I'm reading the word of God or not. If I happen to be out there in the world engaging with the people because I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. But I happen to be engaging with them. Whatever it is that I'm engaging in, I can take that and it will be translated into spiritual by by. Just because of my relationship with God. And so therefore I can take that. That might be oh my God. That might be uh, uh, something that the world would use. And the world would say. And I can flip the script on that thing. And it will be spiritual. By the way that I. By the way that I speak it. Amen. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Lord have mercy. But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart, into his heart, the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. Lord have mercy. Does not accept. Mm mm mm. Gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them. How can you know something that you are not acquainted with? You can't. That's why it's good for you and I to understand. And it's good for many people to grab a hold of this. And I know that there are many people who have been taught this. They've been taught this them from years. It has been passed down from generation to generation. So you ain't the first one that's been taught this. Christianity, y'all, is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. And because it is a relationship, uh, the reason why it's a relationship is because of who, you, it, oh my God, who you, you, we are related to in this relationship. Amen. We have been made to be joint heirs with Christ to the promise of God for his kingdom. We have been given, my God, we have been brought into a to become children of God. And because you are a child of God. Oh my God. Because you are a child of God. And not something or some object. That, 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 you know, that indiscriminately deals with one another. That puts you in relationship. A child. A child of God. He is my father. I am his child. And because he loved me so much. He died for me. He gave up being God for me, y'all. That's what was happening in Philippians, the second chapter, that sixth through the eighth verse. God gave up being God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
He gave 